Okay folks, we are having a few technical issues, so if we're buffering lots or some of you are getting cut out, apologies, the Wi-Fi doesn't get this far down the garden, so if this doesn't work I'm recording it as well and I'll post it up straight away. Uh, if it is working, fingers crossed, Kate is on the live chat, so if you've got any questions or you want to comment, or even just let us know if you can actually see this, feel free to post a wee comment and Kate will get that. Um, I also have a few that have come in through our blog from our blog readers, so I'll get to them as well. So firstly, I should introduce you all. So hi to all the fabulous YouTube viewers that watch all these videos, and hi to all the fabby blog readers who some of you guys didn't even realise we had a YouTube channel. So this is us bringing our whole community together. So, apart from the fact that it is a freezing cold November in Scotland, and trust me, my hands are like ice, hence the big jumper, do my best beach grove gardening kit. Um, so you guys are here, because I said that, I'm dreading this, I said we'd open up the quad grows and see if the copper tape has beaten the slugs. Oh, I'm so dreading this. Um, as you can see, it's the end of the season, everything's stopped producing, so it's time for us to just get everything cleared out of the greenhouse, get it cleaned up properly already for next year. So what I've done is I've been in today and I've cut everything back as much as I can because it was a bit of a jungle in there and you couldn't really get to it, so this wouldn't have worked today. So I've chopped it all back so that I can basically get stuff out of the greenhouse and we can have a look at this. So, just a wee short video today, this is not going to take long and it's freezing. I'm going to pull out the peppers because I think physically I can manage that to get it out here and do this. And we'll crack it open and we'll see. Now, last year, those were absolutely full, not just the slugs, but slug eggs. The lid was just covered in eggs. Um, so I'm really, really hoping that at least it'll be reduced this year. Here goes. Lots of bits I can't lift this. It's not light, I'll tell you that much. Right, so. If you're new to the blog, what is this about? This is a okay? I've got two of these, one on either side, for tomatoes and the like, and this year this one grew peppers, and it does brilliantly. Basically, the bit at the bottom holds all the water, and these pots all have a feeder mat that goes into the water, and it means that you don't water from above, all the water gets sucked up as the plants need it. Now, I've noticed I don't get split tomatoes anymore because they're getting regular water and that split screen is usually caused by it drying up and then you suddenly water in it. Peppers wise, I get so many peppers, we hardly got any peppers. So, oh, can you tell I'm really nervous? Right, let's do this then, let's pull some pots off. Now I was saying, there's the feeder mat, you can see. And already I can see slugs, but not a lot. Let's do this. I'm going to tell you now, guys, the copper tape didn't work. I'm going about 50 slugs, but I'm not seeing eggs on any of the bottoms of the pots. There were lots of eggs on the pots last year. Okay, again, we've got a few slugs, but compared to last year, this is not nearly as bad. Um, yeah, so I'm going to say success because last year, the pot bottoms were absolutely covered in eggs and there were so many slugs it was unreal. We, let's say there's about 50 but that includes little tiny ones and no eggs. I think actually the copper tape might have done its job. Okay, interesting. So, now I spoke about this in a video because I had issues with the slugs getting onto the peppers and munching the peppers and I was thinking well, how are they getting on there if I've got the copper tape? 
we thought it might be because the plants are quite bushy and they're touching the sides of the greenhouse. So it could be that the slugs have climbed up the wall and into things that way. And that's maybe why I don't have quite as many. Maybe next year, maybe we'll try a different route. I wonder if there's a, another copper tapey, copper platform method thing we can try for next year. Okay, so I'm going to go like this. I'm going to say that's a thumbs up. I think it's, it's not completely slug free, but that is so much better than last year. And now I'm going to have to do something with all these slugs. So, cool. Shall we do some questions then? I don't know my lovely wife Kate, have we got any questions in or can I do my bloggy questions? Okay. See, I don't know if the Wi-Fi is strong enough that you guys get questions to The blog guys have sent some in over the last couple of days. So, I hope I can answer these, but how embarrassing will it be if I got a question I don't really answer to? So what have we got? Right, number one. Excuse the purple paper, but if you watch my YouTube channel, you'll know there's a reason for the glasses and the paper. But, okay, Rowan has asked, what are good vegetables to grow in pots? Because I'm working with school kids and we can only have space for pots and containers. Ooh, that's a good question. I'm lucky because I've got lots of space and I've got all the beds and I grow lots of root veg in the beds. Uh, but I've never done it. But I do know that you can grow carrots and beetroots and radishes and those kind of things in pots. Um, quite, carrots are quite good if you do it with sand because you don't get any interference with the root and you'll get nice straight carrots that way because people like pretty vegetables. But also what we have done here is we've grown potatoes in bags and in pots. So that's another one. You do need quite a tall pot for potatoes though they become quite big plants. Um, but that's a good one. So carrots, beetroot, potatoes, you know, root veg, that type of thing is really good for pots. What other veg? Um, I haven't done it myself, I've heard of it. Apparently you can now get little dwarf plants, if you like, specifically for growing in containers in your patio. And you can apparently now get squashes and things that you can do with that. Um, I'm not sure, it depends where you are though, because here in Scotland I have grown squashes and pumpkins in the greenhouse. Um, but the weather here is not brilliant, so I don't know how good that would be for growing pots outdoors. But is that maybe a starter for 10 ribbon? Is that maybe enough to get you going? Um, a good place to go and check out things like that if you're a beginner and you want some answers. If you're in the UK is the Royal Horticultural Society or RHS. They are brilliant, have lots of information on this type of thing. And they have some really good forums that you can go and you can ask questions and people will help you out. So I hope that's helpful, Rowan. Who's next? Uh, <laughs> okay, Richard wants to know which tomatoes are the best. That That's a bit of a, a, a fighting one, that one that could cause trouble. So he's specifically saying for taste, for yield, and which are the easiest to grow. Oh, now. This is going to cause a bit because every gardener will tell you a different answer to this. I know that my hero Jim from Beach Grove, his favourite are Gardener's Delight and Shirley. And we grew them this year because I'd never tried them before. So Shirley I quite like. They all grew really, really well. I had no split skins because this is quite good. Um, and they grew, they're quite nice salad sized tomatoes, make really good sandwiches. But, this is where it gets controversial. We like cherry tomatoes. We do a lot of things with cherry tomatoes and salad and that kind of thing, rather than on sandwiches or whatever. And we like indigo blue is my favourite. It's a little, it's not blue, but it is like a, a deep purple colour. So it looks amazing, you know, all these different coloured tomatoes. But it's got a really, not sharp, but a powerful flavour. It's how do, it's acidic, kind of like a wow flavour to it. I just think it's fantastic. So that's my favourite. Um, again, for yield and for easiness to grow, the cherries and the bush tomatoes, you get a really massive yield on those, much more than if you have... I'm going to stop there and say, watch your feet, Kate. Um, she always kicked the tripod. Um, so those are easy to grow and you get loads and loads, um, but with your kind of standard vine tomatoes, you don't get as many tomatoes because they tend to be bigger 
fruit. And um, so there you go. So for yield, I'd say cherry tomatoes, like Tumbling Tom, the Indigo Blue, that kind of thing. For flavour, Indigo Blue is my absolute favourite. And for ease to grow, well, if you're in Scotland like me, you're not going to be able to grow tomatoes outdoors. But if you've got a greenhouse, it grows brilliant. And again, the bush is easy to grow, but big. Okay, so I'm just going to warn you, with tomatoes, you're going to spend a lot of time pruning and tidying up because they grow out as well as up. And I find they grow up, as you, I don't know if you can see it, but they grow up to the roof of the greenhouse and along the greenhouse because they're really tall. And I'm only little, so I'm kind of like this all the time. So there you go. So I hope that helps, Richard. Who else have we got? Oh, we've got loads in. Uh, okay. Uh, Nemo123. Is that somebody that's a Disney fan, maybe? Uh, Nemo, he or she is asking, do you ever get stuff that doesn't work? Oh, heck yeah. Um, okay, I know that when you're reading blogs and you're on YouTube and stuff, we're only showing you the stuff we want to show you. So we, you, you rarely see somebody on YouTube where like, I don't know if you can see our lawn just now, how patchy it is, but that kind of thing. Um, but let me tell you, no matter how perfect everyone looks, on YouTube and blogs and websites and stuff. We're just normal people. So yeah, loads of stuff doesn't work. Um, what has been a disaster for me? Strawberries this year. I think we've got five strawberries. Um, radishes normally end up all woody and horrible before we can eat them because we're not fast enough. Um, flowers wise, uh, I had a rose in the front garden, has never had a rose on it. Uh, camellia in the front garden get flowers for about two days and this is Scotland so we can tell what season it is by the fact that the camellia flowers because when the camellia flowers two days later we'll get snow or a frost and that kills all the flowers so loads of stuff doesn't happen we had nightmares with the lawn this year it just means you have to put in a wee bit of work and you have to go on the internet and research and stuff to, to learn how to fix it and you get there it's all a learning experience there's no such thing as doesn't work gone wrong or failed all those are our learning experiences and it's how you deal with it and what you learn from it that matters. So don't stress out about stuff not working, your garden not looking super pretty like somebody on TV or whatever. Monty Don's got a whole team behind him and loads of money making his garden look amazing. We do what we can with what we've got and as long as we enjoy it, that's what's important. So I hope that makes you feel better, Nemo. And yes, all of us have problems with things that don't work and the beasties eating things. None of my fruit and veg look like Tesco, don't worry. Uh, what else have we got? Oh, there's a good one. Right, heated greenhouse. Do you need a heated greenhouse to grow veggies? And then in brackets it says, in Scotland. So that's from Bailey41. Um, I'm going to guess then that you're also in Scotland like us. So you're probably freezing just now. I'm doing this because it's so cold. No, you do not need a heated greenhouse. Okay, I don't have a heated greenhouse. In fact, there's so many holes in this greenhouse, the rain gets in and stuff. It does mean, though, that you're going to be limited by what we can grow, okay? So I can't grow loads of lovely lemons and oranges and things, but I can grow tomatoes in a greenhouse. Um, I can bring on my flowers for the garden and bring on new seedlings before I put them out into the beds. So even though it's not heated, it lets me get a start on things and lets me grow some stuff. Um, for instance, we grew pumpkins a couple of years ago. And I'm, I'm using that loosely. We got two pumpkins. Uh, we got loads and loads of little ones, but they never came to anything. And we only ever got two that we actually got to the point where we could eat them. But it was quite cool, except for the fact that pumpkins take up a lot of space. They were on this side and they were putting out shoots and, and I don't know if you call it a vine or whatever. And it was going all the way around. It was quite scary. I swear every time I was in there, I turned around that it moved and it was coming to get me. So we're not doing that again. So, yeah, you can absolutely grow stuff in an unheated greenhouse in Scotland. Um, but it just limits what you can grow. Um, and again, if you don't have a greenhouse, it limits what you can grow. But it also depends what part of Scotland you're in. It's like anywhere else. Some parts are sunnier and warmer than others. Uh, we've got friends that are only 12 miles away up a hill. Um, and they've had days where it's been beautiful scotching and they're out planting their strawberries. And we're here in an absolute piece of super fog, freezing cold. Just depends where you are and you make the best of what you got. Okay, from unheated greenhouses, what else? Okay, Rad Rabbit, um, you guys have got some brilliant names. Uh, do you grow all of your basket flowers from seed or do you buy plants? Okay, a bit of a mix. Um, 
quite a lot. Every year we do try and start off most of our flowers from seed, but I've only got this one small little greenhouse, so I'm, and I've got all my veggies and stuff going, so I'm limited with space. So we have done loads and loads, by loads and loads, I mean I think there were 300 petunia plants that we grew from seed for all of our baskets around. Um, we've grown begonias from seed, we've grown dahlias from seed, aquilegias from seed, but we also pop to our local nursery and we buy uh, little plants because they can bring them on a lot faster than us because they have heated greenhouses. Um, so it depends what we want really, what we can grow and the time of year. Um, this time of year it's getting cold, it's getting darker, things are dying off so our hanging baskets around the house were looking a bit sad. So we popped up to Pentland Plants, our local um, nursery, and we bought some plants to just put in to just bring it back again and get a bit of colour again. So we do a mix. Um, I've also I've bought plug plants. I've got begonias, non scot begonias, plug plants uh, through the post. So you could try that. It's really cheap and you get lots of plants, but they're very, very small. I mean, they were about that size when they came. And you have the whole thing of getting stuff through the post. You don't know how long it's going to take. You don't know how it's going to be handled. So not all of those plants worked. But the ones that did, those begonias, they were going until, believe it or not, Sunday. They were still looking amazing. And we got a crazy frost on Monday, Sunday night, Monday morning, and it killed all my begonias. So we have to go around and tidy all that up this weekend. So yeah, so we do it all. We, we do from seed. We buy plants. We buy plug plants. There's nothing saying that you have to grow everything from seed. You know, you just, you work, you get your garden going, you do what you can, and you enjoy it, that's what's important. So do a mix, have fun, experiment, and see how you go. Okay, right. I'm going to say, if we don't have any live stuff coming through because of the Wi-Fi connection, I'm going to make this the last one because I'm absolutely freezing, and I hope you guys aren't offended. But the last one, oh, that's a good one for last. And especially if you're of a certain age group, um, from the UK, you'll know this one. It's from Uncle Aspidistra. See how many of you get that one then. Okay, and it is, what is your favourite recipe for things that you've grown yourself? Oh, there's probably a few. Right, mine. Let me see. Uh, we, like I say, we do carrots and beetroot and we've done the peppers and the tomatoes and stuff. What's, this year's favourite has been Kate came up with a fantastic recipe for soup, uh, red pepper and tomato, roasted tomato soup, and it was so amazingly good, and we're still making it and loving it. So we put it on the blog, actually, if you want to go and try it out. Um, it is just stunning. It's amazing with some lovely fresh bread, and oh, that was so good. Uh, what else is good? Kate, what's your favourite? Courgette fritters. Courgette fritters, okay. Um, we do usually four tubs of courgettes. Again, for the things that go wrong, we didn't get many courgettes this year. Uh, but yeah, when we have a deluge of courgettes, Kate grates them all and makes little fritters or veggie burgers or whatever you want to call them uh, out of them and fries them up and they are fantastic. Two of them on a roll, fantastic. Or you can have it with couscous or whatever. Again, the recipe's probably on our blog because anything we really like, we share. Um, anything else? What other recipes do we like? Beetroot tart. We do a tart tatan with baby beetroot uh, or puff pastry with a vinaigrette dressing. That's really, really tasty. It'll be on the blog. Uh, I keep saying it'll be on the blog. Okay, before I head away, I will say thank you so much for joining me and putting up with this really appalling Wi-Fi connection. Um, and the blog, if you don't know the blog, it is eliappleby.donald.co.uk slash blog. Okay, I always put links to think, I'm trying to do mirror it's this way around, isn't it? So I think the link would be up there if I put it in. So check out any of the videos and look for the little card links. Um, and usually I've got a link in my bio as well. So thank you so much, folks. Um, I'm going to go in now and get a mug of tea to heat me up because my hands are like ice. And Kate might not shout at me for leaving slugs in the lawn. But thank you so much for joining me and we will see you next time. Because next week I'm going to do a video all about all the patches in the lawn and how you touch your lawn. So, thanks guys, see ya!